I'm delighted you're interested in watching this video. The following content was developed collaboratively with our 3D data software friends. Please share this video. However, it's not okay to modify, copy, publish, create derivative works, license, or offer for sale. If you want to learn more about how to leverage these techniques at your organization, contact us and learn about our Ready, Set, Go, Grow methods to implement 3D digital data to save your organization time and money. Hello, everyone, and thank you for tuning in today. I am Jennifer Heron, CEO and founder of Action Engineering, and we're a company that helps manufacturers to create, use, reuse, and also automate their 3D CAD data in the design, fabrication, and inspection space. We partner with your team to build a resilient future centered on connected, trusted models and an uplifted workforce. Everything we do at Action Engineering leverages practices that are applicable in any CAD and PLM tool suite. We like to call ourselves tool agnostic. Today, I want to teach you guys a digital workflow for CMM and X-ray systems using Creo MBD, QIF, and MBD Vidya. And I'm joined today by Charlie Tersh of Zeiss Industrial Quality Solutions and Daniel Campbell, VP of MBD, at CapVidia. And their digital metrology technologies make this technique possible. If you caught our last webinar, you will see a technique to author an MBD 3D model, generate PPAP elements automatically with a significant savings in time and reduction of manual data entry. We even showed how to process a revision automatically. So check out that recording, which you can access with a free account of Oscar. And we're also going to talk about QIF, the Quality Information Framework today. So if you'd like an introduction to QIF, head back on over to Oscar and watch that recording from part one of this series. Find out about Oscar at our website, action-engineering.com. Does CMM programming cost you significant time and effort? I'm guessing your answer is yes. This digital thread technique I will teach you today can save up to 75% of your CMM programmer's time. I will show you a part that has some complex geometry. The part is fabricated as a casting and is then machined to produce the final product. We're gonna see a Creole model that has annotations semantically associated to its geometric features. Sometimes we call this PMI. We're going to see why QIF is the key interoperability standard to the door of this digital opportunity. We're going to see how Zeiss leverages a digital bill of characteristics to program their CMM. And we're going to see the coordinate measurement machine in action. We'll also see how Zeiss's X-ray equipment, Metrotom, rounds out the measurement plan by scanning the complex geometry, which is defined as an overall profile tolerance. As you watch this demonstration, Keep your mind open to how this 3D digital data can empower your quality and design silos to work together better. When these techniques are used, I see operational efficiencies because feedback loops are established from quality to a design. And design engineers learn how their design requirements are realized in the fabricated part. And this often leads to design optimization to reduce cost and increase part throughput. Let me paint you a picture of your current state and then describe the steps it takes to hand off information from engineering to quality for the purpose of performing a first article inspection. First, a drawing is generated. That drawing is ballooned. A quality planner uses the drawing and balloons to generate an ISIR form or an FAI form. Then they use the drawing and the form to create a measurement plan. This is mostly a manual data entry process today. The quality plan is passed to a CMM programmer to create a machine code program to measure the part. Then the measurement is performed on the CMM. And sometimes there's a need to supplement the measurement plan with additional measurement resources. 
all the measurements are recorded in the ISIR or FAI form, and finally, the part is accepted. So I hope I generally captured the way you work today. I estimate this work takes roughly six days from start to finish. Let's see the workflow and potential time savings when using MBD plus digital metrology techniques together. Just like you did with a drawing, you'll still need this step to generate the MBD or model-based definition. Use your preferred 3D CAD platform in this step, and we recommend training your MBD authors to use GDNT per the latest ASME and ISO standards to maximize the digital metrology savings. Use CapVidia's MBD Vidia software to auto-generate the balloons and a table which captures the bill of characteristics. The Quality Planner uses CapVidia's MBD Vidia software to auto-generate the ISIR form to ISIR. Then the MBD is imported into digital metrology planning software. And today we're gonna see Calypso from Zeiss, where the user of the software does not enter any data, rather he just imports it. During this step, they identify that the GDNT is best validated using a CMM and an X-ray device to check the overall profile tolerance on the cast surfaces. Next, the CMM programmers checks the automated path plan, probes, and simulates the plan path to measure the part. Then the measurement is performed on the CMM and with the X-ray. All the measurements are automatically recorded in the ISIR or FAI form. And finally, the part is accepted. This workflow only takes about a day and a half as compared to the six days before. This is a 75% time savings. In part one of this series, we showed you the first three steps. So I'll pass it on to Charlie from Zeiss to pick up and show us the measurement planning step and show you how this works with our pump case part. Thank you, Jennifer. No, happy to be here. Everyone here at Zeiss is very excited for uh, what uh, QIF has to offer and, and very excited to kind of show how it fits into um, our line of work, uh, especially here with regards to Calypso um, and our CMMs, and we'll even show our, our Metrotom system and kind of how it fits in over there as well. So a uh, very exciting uh, topic here. I'd love to, love to show uh, what Calypso is capable of jump into the, the QIF model where where we pick up from a, a Calypso semen programming standpoint is, is we bring in this uh, the QIF model a whole new aspect to play with. Let's just load our QIF model here in Calypso and you'll kind of see how it does look a little different than a traditional model without any uh, PMI or MBD based model. So the nice thing about the QIF is you really don't lose anything. You, you can do everything that a, a CMM programmer is accustomed to doing in the past. You can extract features, associate um, dimensions to different aspects of the model, and no loss of capabilities from the QIF model. You're only gaining the PMI that's been embedded into it, which you can use to, to really help speed things up. As you can see, we, we got our model here. Um, and if we were to check on the PMI, over here on the left hand side, we can actually see all of these dimensions that have been embedded into the model. Uh, typically, you wouldn't see this coming from non MBD models. So, nice added benefit here, and you can see kind of what surfaces they're associated to, and, and a lot of that work has been done upstream. So, I mean, typically in the past, the CMM programmers had to extract every single little surface that they want to measure. They have to associate those surfaces with a dimension. Um, which in Calypso are called characteristics. And in those characteristics, they have to type in the tolerances and the datums and, and everything that's associated with it. Uh, with the PMI um, being already here, and a lot of that work has already been done upstream, it gives the, the software the ability to extract these features, link them to the appropriate dimensions, and assign the tolerances and datums appropriately automatically. So it really cuts down on a lot of that time-consuming clicking that the, the CMM programmer is typically used to doing. But obviously the programmer still needed to handle a lot of the navigational movements and setting up some alignments and, and things like that. So they are very much still needed in this process. So now that we've got our model loaded, um, I'd like to set this program up so that we can run it on a CMM. First, like any program, we're gonna orientate the model in the manner that it's gonna be fixtured on the machine. I will do that here with a CAD model transformation. We are going to 
rotate this by 90 degrees in the Y, and then negative 90 in the Z. And what this will do is this actually sets our model in the orientation that it's going to be mounted on the CMM. Once we have this orientated, we can actually generate our measurement plan. And we are going to generate all the PMI. Uh, and this is really where you'll see the time saving happen. Is this is going to do a lot of the work that is um, typically done by the programmer. But it's a lot of the kind of monotonous work. It's, it's a lot of the clicking and associating and, and things that are, are not fun to do as a CMM programmer. You want to uh, kind of more focus in on the navigational movement. So I'm going to hit create and you're going to see it bounce around over the model. It's going to actually be extracting all the different surfaces, planes, cylinders, um, and associating them to their dimensions. There will be some prompts along the way. Um, so for instance, if we take a look at uh, this position call out here of, I believe it's these bottom slots, or actually these little rounded cylinders here in these grooves, what we can do is we can choose to have it be a bore pattern, which is what this dimension is requiring. It will continue to bounce around the part, and when it hits another, for instance, this one here, you can see this is a, a bore pattern of these front holes. So we will choose bore pattern again. For all those programmers out there that are used to doing things a certain way, you can still do everything exactly as you, you are accustomed to. It just gives you the ability to use this PMI. I think once you start to get the hang of it, you'll really enjoy using it cut down on programming time. So. And as you can see, it's it's going through and extracting all these cylinders and planes. This is typically where a programmer would actually have to sit here and click on the model. So it's doing all this work for us, which is a major time saver. And we now have all of our features extracted, along with all of our characteristics. And these characteristics, and these are all the dimensions, as I mentioned, they're all coming directly from our PMI list here. So as you can see, all of this PMI has been loaded and these are all directly linked to these dimensions over here on the left hand side now sure as the programmer we can tidy some things up which you'll see me here doing we're going to start off by just setting up our baseline what has happened is we've extracted all of the features and all of the characteristics have been associated to their respective features However, the machine still needs to know how to navigate around the part, so we got to set up a base alignment here. And what we're actually going to use is the datums A, B, and C. So we have datums A, B, C here. Uh, so these, I'll just drag them to the top of my program. Um, these are actually the features we're going to use um, for setting up this alignment. And datum A, all it is is it's this front plane here. Datum B is this center cylinder. And datum C is actually a, a theoretical plane. These two pulled into one surface, uh, one theoretical plane here. So we are going to go into our base alignment window and associate these. We're setting up our alignment. This is so that the machine knows how to navigate um, around the part and find the different areas that we want measured. And that way then when we go to locate this part of the machine, it'll know right where the, the part exists. Now that we've already extracted all of our planes, all of our cylinders, and our characteristics, I mean, this typically would have taken us probably an hour, if not a few hours, um, to do as a, in a typical um, programming manner. So um, this, is, this is really where our time saving is coming in, is, is preventing us from having to click on this model so many times in all of these little holes and, and surfaces and everything like that. We can actually jump right into uh, setting up their, their strategies. So we want to kind of say, okay, well, what probe do we want to uh, measure this with? What clearance plane do we want to um, navigate through to, to in order to measure and then kind of how many points do we want to take and is actually use another one of our tools to auto assign our stylus system. What we're doing is, is we have a stylus system, a star probe um, here that has four tips um, in order to measure all these different features. What we can actually use is our automatic stylus assignment. And what it'll do is it's just going to go through our entire program, look at every single one of these features, and assign what it believes to be the appropriate stylus.
So obviously as a human uh, programmer, we always want to double check, make sure that, that it's not signing something incorrectly. Good first step. It'll do 90% of the work for us. And what that does now is if we were to open up plane A here, it will have actually already assigned stylus system to Y, which if we were to look at this, that is the stylus system we would want measuring this feature. And you can actually see it already has put on a polyline for us. So it already is, is navigating kind of this is the path that it's going to navigate around the part. Now, obviously, if we had a fixture or something holding an area, we would want to adjust this path, um, but it kind of gives us a good starting point. I'm going to leave that as is. And lastly, I will also just want to check our clearance plane. Uh, we would check that to make sure that we, we navigate safely to this feature. And we would want to use the negative Y clearance plane for this feature. What I'll end up doing is I'm going to go down this entire list, kind of double checking the features, making sure there's no navigational um, corrections that are needed and, and everything like that. Uh, but before I do so, I'm also going to set up our clearance planes here. Um, this is our, our clearance cube. We'll just generate it from our CAD model here and, and we could adjust it um, if we need it a little bigger and cube around our part for safe navigation. And we can also uh, make sure that it's using the appropriate clearance plane, um, which is another aspect of programming, uh, making sure that it is not going to have a crash or or break a styli or anything like that. The next aspect is, yeah, like I said, just to run through the features and make sure that they are uh, set up um, to, to have kind of no, no collisions and things like that. So you'll see me doing that here now. I'm going to check this one. You can see we got... Good navigational pass on there and it assigned two circles so we'll grab that cylinder our clearance plane isn't positive y we'd actually want that to be negative y so we'll switch that there and you'll see me just kind of running through the rest of these here uh, really quick so uh, what these strategy scan paths are actually coming from, if you're familiar with Calypso, it's our save load defaults. So you can actually set all this up ahead of time so that when the measurement plan is generated, it throws on the strategies that you'd like um, in certain circumstances, whether it's you want it to be a certain amount of distance away from the edge or, or scan say 380 degrees or or whatever have you be um, so uh, it is all kind of pre-programmed here I just had to go through and tweak some of them for some of the uh, the unique circumstances or unique features uh, but a lot of them I could actually just leave as is so uh, not everything needs to be adjusted but always good to double check for sure this last feature here is actually um, a surface profile callout of the entire part. So as a CMM programmer, if I saw this handed to me, I mean, you can see the, the callout here. It is just a general profile of everything. Um, so Calypso, it did try and create the, the freeform first surface that would be used to measure this. However, as a CMM programmer, we got to think, okay, is this measurement CMM friendly? Well, Sure, we could try and measure it on CMM, but the problem is it's going to be a real nightmare to have to touch off on every single little edge and surface here all over this the backside of this part. It's, it's really not practical with the CMM. It's going to take a long time to scan, and you're still not hitting everywhere that the, the call it is technically asking for. So this dimension would be much more in line with um, a CT data set measurement, so a measurement coming from our Metrotom. I am going to delete our, our complete surface profile for now. We'll show how to measure that later on with the Metrotom data. We've got all of our strategies. I mean, as you can see, I mean, anyone that's programmed before, we're, we're flying. This is this is maybe an hour's worth of work that we just flew through in 20, 30 minutes. When I go and click on said characteristic or dimension, it will highlight here on our model so we can see we got our tolerance set big time saver no more manually typing those in um, or in our nominal i should say and then we have our upper and lower tolerances set and you can see it's already associated uh, this inner cylinder with this diameter and we can actually run this through simulation to kind of give us a preview of what we're going to see on the machine All right, so we'll see our stylus system come into view here, and now we'll see it run just as it would 
on the CMM. I'll turn up the speed a little bit. But you can see it, how it's going to just trace around and all of our paths. So everything that I just did, I mean, as I, I mentioned previously, I mean, that would have taken probably a few hours at the very least. And that's for an efficient programmer. I mean, if you're if you're new to programming, uh, we're talking maybe a day or two to really kind of make sure everything is set up how you how you'd like it. Uh, so everyone, everyone programs at different speeds, but this removes um, a lot of the programmer error. Now you're not worried about mistyping a number in or, or something like that, um, as well as improves the, the time it takes to, to do the programming. Uh, so it's really just a, a very helpful tool as a CMM programmer. And we'll just let it run here in simulation. We can kind of watch it. All right, so that is the end of our simulation run. And what I was doing while that was running is I was just kind of noting the areas that needed to be tweaked. Um, would have had a few collisions there. I mean, with any program, the first time you write it, you always make a mistake. Um, that's just that human error. But uh, that's what the QIF side of things will help eliminate a lot of that. So uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in here, make a few corrections. Um, and then we'll actually be the go run it on the, the actual machine. Uh, we'll show you that. So before, though, I make these corrections, I wanted to show you uh, we also have the QIF result. So just like any part we run, we need to get these results out and, and over to whatever software um, is, is kind of handling or managing them. So well, and in the QIF environment, uh, not only do we accept the, the QIF model in, but Calypso does have the ability to spit out your results in the QIF format so that we can then bring them back into a software like MBD Video or something else. So what I'm going to do for this program is here, I will turn on QIF result. That way then, after I make these changes, uh, when we run it on the machine, we'll be able to get that file and kind of show that workflow of everything going back into MBD Video uh, shortly. So. All right, and you'll be able to see the measurement uh, plan kind of running through here. Uh, we sped it up just from a time-saving standpoint, but uh, this is like any any CMM programmer or machine operator. I mean, you're used to doing this on a, on a daily basis. Uh, you can see it's very similar to our uh, simulation run that we did previously or a few minutes ago. Uh, it's just going to uh, kind of be the actual scans here. So we'll get the, the QF result file once this completes, and we'll jump actually into the Metrotom uh, CT data set portion of the program uh, to show that next before kind of looking at the overall results. But we'll let this wrap up here though. This was scanned on uh, Zeiss Contura uh, with a, an active VAST probe head. For those of you that are familiar with our CMMs, uh, the different models and things like that. So as you recall, there were a few dimensions that were not able to be checked um, in the measurement plan on the CMM. So what we would like to do is show these um, measurements being checked on our uh, CT system here within Calypso. Uh, so we can take data from a system like a Metrotom, pull it into Calypso, and check those dimensions in a non-contact manner. Uh, it's, it's a very similar process. We'll be loading the, the QF model um, and generating the measurement plan. And then instead of actually measuring live on the machine, we can actually do the measurements live here in Calypso. So you will see that here shortly. First, I'm going to just pull in the measurement QIF file here. So we'll load this just like we did um, when it came to the tactile CMM measurements. We pull in the model. And we can actually now go into our PMI list and generate just the characteristics um, that we want to measure um, for this program coming, or this measurement plan coming off of our, our Metrotom system. So I'm going to choose just these two surface profile callouts. This one is the all around. It, there's a lot of small areas in here that just are not CMM friendly. And then this one's just the backside um, surface here. So we will choose those two and generate the measurement plan just with those. We don't have to generate the complete thing. You can pick and choose what dimensions you actually want 
within your measurement plan. Once you've generated the measurement plan, we can kind of go through the, the typical programming procedure. A couple cylinders or circle paths, I should say. All right, so the last little bit that needs the attention is actually generating our freeform surface on the, the CAD model here. Um, you can see uh, this, all this purple area here is where we would want to measure um, for a surface profile. Now, this is a very difficult measurement on a CMM just because, as I mentioned, you can't get a tactile probe to really touch off on all that area. You could, but it would take an extremely long time to scan. So a CT data set analysis like this is going to be much more ideal from a time standpoint. Um, and you can actually check all those little nooks and crannies. So what I'm going to do is just program the strategy here to cover all those little areas. And you will see the software just assigns the nominal points all over all the selected area here that we want to check. Now that our freeform strategy has been completed, we can actually jump over into our characteristics list and make sure those are all good to go. So I will close out here. Uh, we can see all the, the nominal points that were placed all over the, the surface there. And then we also have our scan paths. So we'll check our characteristics here. Uh, you can see we generated GP36 and GP32, which are the two freeform or two surface profile callouts that we'll be checking with the freeform surface. You can see we got our Dadmus plugged in and our tolerance already from the MBD. And we should be good to go here. So uh, lastly, what we have to do before we load the CT data set to actually perform the measurement, we just have to set up another quick base alignment here. We will use the same that we did in our tactile program. We will plug in Datum A. However, we don't actually need to uh, worry about the navigation of the machine, what orientation this part is in, because everything is done here within the clips of software. We don't have to worry about having collisions. That is one of the, the great benefits of using a CT data set. And last but not least, we just have to load the actual CT data. So I will go ahead and do that now. What we have is an STL file. So we will load this. This actually comes from our Metrotom system. Uh, it, was, it was ran over there before this, and we can do all the evaluation offline here on this separate computer. All right, so you can see our CT data set has been read. Um, it is actually here. You can see it floating in space. The last thing we need to do is just align it to the model and uh, run the measurement plan. So I will do that here. So the way you align it is similar. If you're thinking of your train of thought on a CMM, you're running and taking tactile points on the actual part. Well, you can see we have our CAD model here, and we actually have the CT data set, the actual kind of um, part here in space. So what I end up doing is we just take the alignment points on the respective surfaces here. All right, and then once you align it, it will match those datums up to the datums on the CAD and actually begin running the measurement plan here. And as it's running here, you can see the vector arrows there kind of bouncing around the part as it's checking each of the individual areas. So you can see this freeform surface. It's going to be checked much faster here on the CT data set than if you were physically scanning it with a tactile probe. It's pretty neat technology, kind of fun to watch. And at the end, we'll get our, our PDF. And you can see we are passing here on GP36 and GP32. Um, but the PDF report, maybe not so much what we're looking for. Um, Personally, I'm interested in the result QIF file. This is what we'll then pull in to our MBD video or uh, some other third-party software to actually pull these results and bring them full circle. Thanks, Charlie. Um, yeah, so this is Daniel Campbell. I'll walk you through now the portion of um, importing these results uh, from the CMM and from the uh, CT. Um, into back into the QIF uh, MBD model so that we can kind of 
view this you know full round trip and get the results back um, into the model based enterprise. Um, so what we're looking at here is this is the QIF MBD model here in MBD Vidya. Uh, this is the model that we created you know back at the last webinar about a month ago. Um, so this model is a, a reflection of the Creo native and it's ready to receive some of these measurement results. So what we're going to see is um, we will insert um, first the results from the CMM measurement here into MBD video. And so we'll go ahead and do that. We'll select insert, uh, choose the CMM results. Uh, we'll make sure that these results get connected back with the MBD data, and there it is. Uh, so what we're looking at, we see that they're, um, the blue lines that we see are actually the scan paths. I mean, so if we zoom in there, we'll be able to see, uh, if you zoom in enough, you'll end up seeing uh, separate individual points, uh, each of the points that was gathered by the CMM. Um, and in the Bill of Characteristics, uh, we'll see uh, each of the uh, each of the measurements, each of the um, features and characteristics that were measured. Um, and as we select those, each of those items, we could see the result that was measured uh, on this um, on this CMM. So we start to see some of the results um, that were brought in from the Zeiss uh, Contura CMM. And I mentioned those uh, data points, those you know the blue uh, scan uh, points that are uh, visible there on the model. Um, I mean, that's another benefit of this approach um, is, the, you know, with the digitization of all of this is that now we have the actual raw uncompensated CMM points that were measured on each of the features. And that could prove, you know, really useful down, down the road if you want to do some type of new analysis of this data. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we've got to import those CT results. So we go through the same uh, steps. We select our CT results, though, this time. And... Um, we act to reconnect that data back with the MBD data. Uh, so now we have imported those results and we can see the, uh, the measurement points that were uh, created in Calypso from all that CT data. And we can look at those couple of, um, those couple of tolerances, those general profile tolerances that were measured with the CT device. Um, so this is kind of the, yeah, you know, uh, profile tolerances that that are measuring larger or more irregular surfaces. You know, often you might find this covered with a unless otherwise specified or something like this. So yeah, in this case, it's a great use of the CT device. Um, and in the Bill of Characteristics, we see our CMM results on the left side, and then the CT, the X-ray CT results are there in that right column, just sort of all nice, neatly organized and tied back to the MBD. Your current state leaves your data disconnected with significant error introduced and the need to manually track down the pedigree of the data when you need to take corrective action. This is flat out time consuming. The MBD plus digital metrology workflow demonstrates how to achieve a 75% time savings from six days to one and a half days and a 100% reduction in manual data reentry. And because we are avoiding the cost of poor quality by reducing the reliance on manual data entry and establishing digital traceability feedback loops between engineering and quality, we see a 100% increase in data traceability. I hope you will take advantage of increasing the quality of your products using MBD, QAF, CapVidia, and Zeiss's tools to achieve these game-changing benefits. I know I'm very grateful that the cars on the roads have quality teams at each automotive producer focused on high quality parts. When Action Engineering works with your team to implement model-based definition for design, fabrication, and inspection activities, we see tangible benefits when these three typical silos build good cross-functional relationships. So with MBD, plus digital metrology, you will not only save time and increase data quality, but now quality teams contribute to the time savings rather than being the bottleneck. 
Thank you to Daniel and Charlie for sharing a demonstration of your tools today that empower engineering and quality to work better together. Our team of experts at Action Engineering empowers your team to build a resilient future centered on connected, trusted models and an uplifted workforce. Thank you.